Welcome all uh, to the, my experience as the bounty hunter. Um, this is my thematics of, of this talk will be around Boba Fett, which for those who, who know about Star Wars is, according to Darth Vader, the best bounty hunter in the galaxy. So uh, I think he never died. Even in the in the movie, he was swallowed by uh, some wormhole and he spit it again, and nobody nobody knows what happened to the bounty hunter. So this will be about uh, my experience in the last two years regarding this this BBAP, which I like to call them because it's bug bounty appreciation programs. This this is something that uh, Google invented this this type of word because it makes sense. It's a appreciation. Um, it's like a, 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 a something good that you are doing. So um, that's that's I will talk about about it. So uh, my name is David Sopas. Okay, you already know that. Um, I'm security consultant for Checkmarks. I'm security team leader for Sharp Forty Nine. Um, in the past ten years of experience, I disclosed more than fifty security advisories on bug track. Uh, Secunia, whatever, uh, uh, made some work, especially on, on web application security because it's the, my main focus. Um, uh, it's my forte, if I may say it. Uh, I was the founder of uh, WebSegura. I don't know, with your hands, if you already know WebSegura. Okay. Okay. Too many people. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, and the part that makes more interesting is I love to hack web applications. Um, that's the main 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 topic of my my life. Um, I also sometimes I participate in comments on on the media when they have any questions regarding info info security. I will not talk about cyber. I'm against the word cyber. Okay, so if anyone is sitting here talking, uh, waiting for me to say cyber attacks or cyber war, I will not talk. Um, I was acknowledged by a few companies. Uh, Microsoft, which which is quite cool, I was acknowledged or listed like eight times on Microsoft. Uh, some of them with a reward. Uh, some of these companies, I I earn T-shirts, swag or bags, lights, um, software. Uh, I don't have here any antivirus companies, but I have lots of licenses that I discovered. Uh, on security issues regarding, uh, um, I don't know, Kaspersky, Panda, EVG, whatever. Uh, the most interesting one, I may tell, it was eBay. It was very interesting. Uh, Booking, which is a bounty program that uh, I, I'm very comfortable, and GoDaddy, uh, but also I'm very, very familiar with the program. So this is some of them. Uh, on this on this talk, I will talk simply about bug bounty. What is it? Okay, I think anyone here already know that. Uh, my experience on BPAP, most common vulnerabilities that I found, particularly in two programs, uh, Acker One in, and in Cobalt. Um, where to start searching, both in private programs and public programs, bug bounty versus or not security companies and in the end if you have any questions you can ask me anything or come to me and we talk a little so what's bug bounty quite simple right you find a bug you receive money that's it <laughs> okay what, what what can we talk about this it's just that uh, which is good right when you get some Good money. Um, crowdsources programs like Acker One, Cobalt, and Backcrowd help the communication between the two parties, the hunter, if I may call it, and the company itself, the clients, right? So, just to give you a small example, um, I, I gave the example of Uber because uh, Uber has a nice uh, interaction with Portuguese guys because Integrity made an excellent work finding a security issue there. Uh, I already found one issue also, but Integrity, okay, they won lots of money, so I think it's 
Okay, you find the security issue on Uber, you report it on HackerOne, which is the platform that hosts the, this program. Uh, Uber or uh, HackerOne mediator or curator will tell you, okay, it's, uh, it's a duplicate, it's a valid one, um, okay, if it's out of scope, you lose reputation, something like that. So in the end, if everything goes well, which went well to integrity, right? Uh, HackerOne pays bling bling. So, it's quite simple. Experience in bug bounty appreciation program. So, I started in March 2015 on Cobalt. Uh, by luck, yeah. Um, I was in, I was, I found a security issue on a big IT company, uh, one of the biggest in the world. Uh, I was a client and I decided, okay, let's try to contact him and, and try to, to manage the, the bug itself, it was a serious risk, and they told me that there were a program that they were working with uh, that were mediating the security issues there, so it was crowd security, which is now Cobalt. Um, so I was invited to that program and started finding more issues, uh, and when I got many more reputation, I, I I was climbing the ladder and getting more invitations to the to other programs. And six months later, with some effort, I was number one in Cobalt rank. Uh, this is the the rank at the time. Um, I think it changed a little bit. Uh, I think in the current time is this. I remain on the top, but <laughs> I think. Rupan is now number two, um, but, and, and I already have some, I think, more points, I don't care. Uh, this is the Hall of Fame, which it's some type of game, so you get encouraged to find more, more bugs, not only for the money, but also for the reputation, and, and also for the, the, okay, money and reputation, it's like that. So, um, I, I started to see that, um, it was important to, to, to join other programs because I was doing so well on Cobalt and we have also here a, a present person that is manager of the Cobalt with Jacob. Um, and I decided to join HackerOne and BugCrow. BugCrow, uh, I had a very bad experience. Uh, at first I was getting a good invitations on, for private programs and after a couple of while there, one of the programs decided to create a, 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 a reply to my to my re one of my reports telling me that there were a, a acceptable risk and I was like okay this is either I can get all your users information I act your API I can get all everything that I want from it and the guys oh but we cannot change it. It's, a, it's sorry. It's an acceptable risk. I tried. I tried to mediate with Buckcrowd, and they helped me a lot. But uh, sometimes it doesn't doesn't uh, the, the the communication between the program was very bad experience for me, and so I I, I stopped working for Buckcrowd. And also, it's very hardware security and mobile apps applications. So it's not my strong point. So. That was uh, the start of my my losing connection with Buckcrowd. Ecruan was awesome. I, I had lots of invitation from private programs, and it was pretty cool because I think uh, uh, in in the name of uh, in the number of clients that must be the the the, the most popular one. Uh, I'm number third. I'm on top thirty, yeah. Um, which is on Ecruan. I think it's good. For me, I, I think it's I'm the first Portuguese there uh, with this rank, um, and okay, um, it's not not uh, this is the sum of the accurate activity. All of them were for free. Okay, uh, I want to to tell about Adobe especially because Adobe cross site scripting only took two years to fix. Two years. <laughs> I, I, I forgot about this, this bug, and I was like, really, I found something on other? Really? Cool. Oil Sheesh, I tried for free again, just for the challenges, the challenge, because it was uh, oilsheesh.pt, 
and I'm a Portuguese, so let's try it. They offered me a t-shirt, I think, I think. <laughs> and whatever. Uh, no, it's important. I, I, I didn't. Uh, I, nowadays, I, I don't buy t-shirts anymore. <laughs> I, I may ask on the future for trousers or, or other type of clothes because it's important. I don't want to give, you an, give a, a talk with only a t-shirt. That's weird, but OK. Um, how do I t did I achieve this? Um, persistence, OK? I'm a, s a very persistent guy. I, I don't quit easy. Um, when I found something that I need to catch, that, that I, I, it's, it, it needs to be mine. So uh, I, I always, I always, since I was a kid, I was a self-taught guy and read a lot of books. And with, with that in mind, uh, I always try to accomplish my goals. And I'm not a full-time bug bounty hunter or something. I'm, like, like I said before, I'm a security researcher. And I, I, I was also listening to the talk of Jonathan, uh, which was very interesting and giving these the other the other view it's it's very cool so uh one of the things that i do is searching where others usually don't search that's very important it's so um and at the end to prove myself that i could do it there's a challenge i need a challenge in my life and this is one one of it some rules because you are in the bug bounty program you have some specific rules always respect the scope they have rules, okay? You need to follow them. If they have like only three domains or one domain and subdomains, you need to only test them. Respect the, the program itself. Don't be a beggar. Uh, again, I will talk this in the end because, because in the next slide, I will show some examples on, on how not to be a beggar. Um, write clean and provide such as much information uh, to the program. Um, again, even Uber uh, has the reference on, on, on integrity blog uh, regarding the, the, the discoveries that they found. Uh, that's very important. And I also have two, two major examples. Um, one, which is a friend of mine, which is in, in the audience, who, who found a duplicate result on HackerOne, and they paid him anyway because the report was so good. So that's very important. If you, go, if you write a good report, you might get lucky. Uh, and also, on Uber, uh, one of, I, I only found one security issue on Uber. Uh, I don't spend too much time there. Um, I, I found an out of scope issue, okay? Usually they don't pay for out of scope. But I, in the report, on the description, I wrote perfectly, I know this is out of scope, okay? But this is a security risk that I think it's important to, 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 to publish and to tell you guys about it. And you must try to fix it, OK? And Uber was so cool that they resolved the problem very fast and rewarded me with money. So it was out of scope. But still, if you have a good report and have a good interaction and be respectful to the program, they pay you. That's, that's one of the things. Um, Another tip, uh, read other bug bounties reports. For example, HackerOne has a full disclosure uh, area where you can see lots of reports that are very good. Some of them are very bad. You'll see it on the next slide. <laughs> but also, you can learn a lot from, from this. And the book, Web Hacking One on One, is a compilation of lots of security issues on bug, bug, bug bounty programs. It's well, well written, it's, it's very cheap. I think it's 9.99 or something dollars. So it's, it's worth. So don't be a beggar. I think if I click it, it opens. This is a more, more money, please. And the guy sent him $1, OK? You want more money? I'll give you $1. Incredible. This is a beggar. Again, we have, we have money, money examples. Oh, sorry. OK, and now I can see it. Uh, this guy was asking for updates like daily. Any update? Any update about this one? Any update about this report? Sir. <laughs> That's incredible. It's, you need to be polite, right? The next slide. The next slide, no. Any reason why you didn't close this as spam? How can you close without giving any reason? Don't you see detailed report with image explanation? <laughs> it gave the <an> image. 
please, give me, give the guy money. Okay, this is the one. And this guy, it, it's, it's legendary because it's the same guy, it's the same guy that, that the other one. So this guy sent to the mailroom program and on Acker one and I want 50, $50, $500, yeah. but again, he didn't quit. <laughs> hey, I want more. <laughs> and you have, when you pay this amount, I think, this guy needs it fast, the money, okay? <laughs> Come on, program, give him the money fast. Maybe he has bills to pay. <laughs> Can you provide more reward? Please, please. Seriously, I need $500. <laughs> so this is how to be a beggar, and don't be like that if you want to test some bug bounty program. So most common vulnerabilities. Um, I gathered some information about my valid reports, uh, more than 500, and I, it's only based on Cobalt and I can run because they are the programs that I, I, I work more often. So this is in Cobalt. Uh, sorry if my charts are not so cool as Binary Edge, but <laughs> I did it online. I'm not very, very comfortable doing it. But I want to be specific that uh, reflected file download was the most popular vulnerability that I found very closely to cross-site scripting um, on, on the Cobalt platform. Uh, it's incredible because it's very different from the next chart from Maker One. Uh, this is was based in two, 220 reports, valid reports, I don't know. But it was pretty close because reflective fund will know this, one of my favorite vulnerabilities is not very well known. And I think uh, most, well, more, th more than applications have this vulnerability on, on, on there. So this is from Cobalt. Acker one, completely different. Cross-site scripting, of course. Because it's the first thing that you try when you have, for example, a private program uh, on Acker one. The first thing that you try is cross-site scripting. Uh, this is, uh, I, I can divide this, this 50% uh, on reflective uh, and stored. The, the only reason is that reflective pays like sometimes 1K at max, and store can get, get, can get you sometimes on 5K. So it's, it's important to, to know that type of information. I found some IDORs, injection, template injection nowadays is very common. Uh, I love JSON issues, API, and stuff like that. Uh, bad practice is becoming more often, well, they pay, so. Um, so I'm going backwards now. Sorry about that. Click the wrong button. Come on. Okay. Where to start searching and getting, in this case, coins? Um, on private programs, of course, cross-site scripting, because why? They are most common. You go to the most common vulnerabilities that you find, so cross-site scripting. Uh, Cross-cross E or XXE is one of most interesting stuff right now, uh, and it's one of the things that I try very, next to the cross-site scripting, I always try to do the, the both of them at the same time sometimes. RC, Robin Command Execution, also very important. Uh, you can find still lots of image magic vulnerabilities there, so it's important. Check vulnerabilities in subdomains, that's important also. I will give you some, some tools to, to check uh, uh, the, the, the subdomains and bad practices. I will talk about cross XXE. Uh, cross-site scripting, uh, it's, it's a waste of time talking here because most of you guys already know that, and RCE also. So, private programs, XXE. Well, if you get a request that parse XML and that is allowed in DTD, I'm 
going faster because I assume that most people understand what I'm talking about. So uh, it's besides, so XML configured to process the info. And I will show you uh, a, a real example that I found on Wikiloc. I don't know if uh, any of you knows Wikiloc. Uh, well, it's a place where you can upload or download the GPS, GPX file um, and go for a walk or cycling or something like that. So I downloaded the, the GPX file from Wikiloc. I modified it, the GPX, which is a XML. So it has coordinates. So uh, I just tweak it, tweak it a little with the entity to gather the file issue on the Linux server and requested the, the system to go to my website, davidsopers.com, uh, and grab the DTD from my server. Then you get request by the send name. This is more amplified. So um, the, 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 important, uh, the important thing to do is that when I sent this GPS, GPX file, I got a, a interesting information on my server, especially on my web server log. It returned the version or the file host, which was, this is my web server, okay. The IP, the IP is not this one anymore. So uh, it returned on the request Debian, okay, it's the content of the headset file. And it also tell me the user agent, I'll say they, they are using Java. So. Uh, when I uploaded my modified GPX file, I got an interesting stuff. With this, we can get, drop a shell, control everything on the server. We can do whatever. And they were pretty nice. They were offered me a t-shirt. <laughs> they always offer t-shirts. And a voucher uh, to a site, Chain Reaction. I, I, I don't know if I can say it, but uh, so I can buy some some stuff, some cycling stuff, which which I... I love it because it's some of the stuff that I do is cycling, so very, very cool. Um, subdomains, I have some open source tools here that I use, Sublister, Subbrute, and the Harvester. Uh, some of you may know it, some of you not, and they are pretty easy to use. To use. They are all terminals, so uh, you can go Sublister and put the domain and they gather all the subdomains using uh, reverse IP, they go use uh, Google Darking and stuff like that. They are very, very interesting. The Harvester is a tool that's even harvest for um, user accounts, emails that he founds on Google Darking, uh, LinkedIn accounts for, for the guys that work on that company. So it's an awesome tool also. It's very interesting. Um, again, on private programs, after you check vulnerabilities on subdomains, let's check for WordPress installations because especially on Uber, that's a lot of money. Uh, you can use WP Scan. I think it's the best uh, WordPress scanner tool that, that nowadays uh, is available to the public. So uh, run WP Scan and try to find something interesting, plugins uh, or anything like that. Check for files and directories. Dear Buster and Dear Search are very, very, very good. Um, one of the things that I already found, and sometimes developers like to, 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 well, to leave some files on the root server, on the accessible to the public that are interesting. For example, uh, I found already a database like sql.bac. Okay, all the database was a backup file, so. PHP info is very common to find, so you get the information from the PHP and uh, pair disclosures and stuff like that. Also, I had some information regarding um, uh, banking accounts on a file. I don't know. It was called one dot old dot back. He found it, and I, I saw some transactions there, and I was like, okay. Let's 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 send to the program to see if it, if it pays and yeah it pays. So, and finally, go burp. It's my favorite tool, my proxy tool, burp. So uh, you can do everything, even check for files using burp. Uh, you can do WordPress uh, scanning with burp. Bad practices. You can earn some 
not 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 a lot of money, but some of it. Uh, tokens validation, sensitive information inside cookies. Yeah, sometimes cookies are encoded in base 64 and as useful information. I don't know why. Uh, password strength. Yeah, this is one thing that I I, I found lots of times in on web applications and most of it in in big companies that allow you to use the password one. If, if anyone allows a brute forcing attack, please, okay, one isn't even the most common. I think it's one, two, three, four. So it allows to, to, be, to be used. So uh, companies need to fix that. And it's also uh, one of the things that are uh, eligible to, to, to bounty reward. Uh, username enumeration also using reset password or something like that. And server information disclosure usually on headers. And again, I'm going backwards. Public programs. Okay, this this is the hard part because public programs are that that there, there are hundreds or even millions of guys trying to to hack the web application where you try to also get some. So what I try reflective file download because it's one of my babies. I love this. Uh, and also business uh, logic flaws. Very interesting. This is not very common. I'm still studying it, uh, and it might be a, one of the, the future uh, bounty rewards that gain lots of, of money. It might be business logic flaws, and I will talk about later. Mobile security issues, of course, nobody, um, especially me, I don't understand really the mobile security issues. So what I usually do is just uh, try to find the endpoints on the application and try to get an API and gather from that because I have no knowledge on 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 mobile application. CSV injection, Excel injection, also very cool, and I will show an example how to do it. Cross-site scripting bypasses because I love cross-site scripting and it's so so interesting to sometimes to to bypass security in the in with, with this vulnerability and no no we have everything sanitized okay let me prove you are not and that's incredible also paid member areas most bounty hunters don't pay for a, a member area so your scope is even bigger because okay the the, the it's in scope the member area okay of a, a client or, uh, or something like that and you pay 50 bucks most Bounty hunters, especially from countries where, uh, okay, I don't want to jump myself, but uh, don't pay that kind of money. So if you pay 50 bucks, you might find lots of vulnerabilities that get you a lot, lot more. So it's very, very interesting. And so uh, my... I don't know. Uh, I, I already talked with the guy who, who, who discovered this on, on Black, he published it on Black Hat, uh, Arena Fif, he's from Israel. Uh, he found Reflective File Download. Um, and he told me that this is incredible and it's every web application, modern, is vulnerable to this uh, type of vulnerability. Uh, Again, it's present uh, in every application, adds lots of potential. Uh, keep in mind, you find it these uh, usually on APIs, uh, but it's not a JSON issue, so you only need some type of reflection to do it. And I wrote a, a very good article, but the address was so big, so I tried to tiny a little bit, so it's good, RFD rocks, so if you, it's quite simple. But in the end, I will, I will also tweet my, my presentation if you want to download it. This is a, a video example that I found a reflective file download on Google, uh, which got me some bucks. Uh, and I think I need to play it. Okay. So you have google.com. I tried to call back, injected my callback with calc, of course, calculator. I'm a trusty guy. Okay. Set up what from Google. Okay. I trust it. I save it on my hard disk and when I run it, something from Google, you'll get what? A calculator. Nice, I can do whatever I, I wanted. I could uh, disable, uh, open a new new tab with Chrome, uh, disabling all the security uh, add-ons and stuff like that. I can 
I jacked the account from the, the administrator, whatever. I have this one from eBay. Uh, I, I created a special crafted to, uh, page, was hosted on WebSegura, still in WebSegura. Um, on eBay, I was only listed on the, the acknowledgement list. So, and it took like a year to fix this issue. And what I did is uh, auto download stuff, set up dot bat, batch file. So when I open the file, it opens a new window. You can see it's from eBay, the download. So pretty trusty, in my opinion. So when I run it, it opens a new window. This could be mal malicious, but it's not, okay? You can do whatever you want with this. <coughs> Business logic flaws is something that I told before. Uh, it's, it's something that, that I'm, I'm trying to still learning a lot because it's not very common. Um, any operation that the web application uh, is or not coded to be performed or was not supposed to do, it can be used as a tag. For example, uh, my web application is, uses two-factor authentication, right? Okay, um, I think I'm secure. But uh, if the developer forgot the same authentication on a reset password, where I can use only clicking the link and giving me access to the account, I bypass the two-factor authentication. So this is a major issue, and you can get like two to five K with this issue. This is a business. Uh, logic flaw. It's quite simple. Uh, I'm still learning about it and you have lots of them. Uh, it, it, it's very time consuming to learn this and you need to get in the, the guts of the application to, to hack it. And I found a, a great uh, paper ra uh, called Breaking the Web with Logics. It's very interesting so you can search for it. Uh, it's very cool. Uh, mobile security issues. Um, again, not very familiar with mobile security issues and why in pub public programs it's my it's interesting because not many people knows how to to hack uh, applications on Android or iOS or something like that so it's very important on public programs to try that so this is one of the things that you can try on public programs CSV injection I love this it's, it's so simpler uh, so you imagine that a web application has export or import CSV or XML, okay? XML knows, she's LS. Uh, yeah. For example, a program on Cobalt, which I will not tell the name, uh, had a download member list where it was accessible by members and uh, admin. So I changed my name to equal two plus five. Quite simple, it's, it's like doing template injection, just using brackets, but okay. And what I, when I opened the CSV after the, the, the exportation, I noticed that my cell was the number 10. Okay, it, it did the math, so interesting, not bad. So what I did, I used DDE, which a comment on, I think it's open office, I think, uh, that tries to open CMD and run calc, okay. If someone opens this Excel file, we'll pop up a calc, maybe. Yeah, it opened a calc. So this is the comment. You can see it. Uh, you can change your name to a, to a, a CSV injection. And when the admin or other members have this opportunity, they pop up a calc. It's very interesting. Uh, it, it works on, on, on Office, on Excel, and uh, open Office. It doesn't matter. You have only to change the type of comment. You can use. Another thing which is very interesting, for example, uh, imagine that your password is on my last name, Sopas. You can use equal hyperlink, use your link, for example, davidsopas.com, and you put interrogation point and give the parameter that is on C3. When they click it, they send me their password, okay, because it's on my server and I'm waiting for that request. So this is very simple to, 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 to recreate and it's very, very common, very common. Nobody already, because sometimes they, okay, I sanitize the, the, the equal sign. You can use the plus sign, the minus sign, 
many people don't know that. You, you have lots of parameters that you can use. So, cross-site scripting bypasses. Um, I'm a big fan, okay, of cross-site scripting. Um, and usually on public programs, when you send something that you found, because many companies take so long to fix it, uh, it gets duplicate or it's already fixed or something like that. Fixed, no, because I already sent it. But it's a kind of cliche, but you need to think outside the box. What I did, okay, let's go to Mozilla documentation and try to find something interesting like ES6, the new JavaScript. Cool, we can do anything with other type of characters, like most WAFs and sanitizers block single and double code. Okay, on ES6, I use tick. I bypassed it. So, quite simple. <coughs> Using documentation on the new JavaScript or new technologies like Angular or React, you can learn a lot with new... For the tech, it's, a, it's incredible, because you can even use... A, a, I treated this, uh, on, on October, that you can use uh, uh, cross-site scripting payload even on the function name. So, that's incredible. You have the, the information here. So, my, my function is called this. So, it's quite simple. Um, also, cross-site scripting bypasses. Again, mo many developers um, don't they, they, they try to, to, to use the content type HTML on JSON requests, which is very wrong, because if it reflects something that you in, uh, injected, like a name or a callback, you get a pop-up, right? It's very simple. They need to create a request with a JSON or text or even protect themselves, because this, this even can be used as a reflective file download. They need to use content disposition header to force the, the name of the download. They need to sanitize and write the, 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 the content type on other things than not rendered in HTML. Paid member areas, like I told you. Um, most of them don't pay for it. Uh, and I already paid for many member areas, which, which is good because my scope is better than most people. Okay? So, uh, you can increase your scope using this and really if you want to start searching on bug bounty programs start here and business logic flaws because I think that that's the way to go not the other ones finally I, I don't know how much I have in time okay uh, this is some uh, some some colleagues of mine I uh, we have discussed this a lot because, uh, especially, I'm not a bug bounty hunter. Uh, I have a, a other profession, uh, but I do this like a hobby. I don't get more money, and with the money I earn, I could buy stuff that usually I I couldn't. So, uh, more shirts, yeah. But I need other things besides shirts. My wife isn't happy with a pack of t-shirts too. Oh, okay, so. Um, one thing that I, 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 I try to, to, to explain to security companies is that the, the bug bounty security companies can combine each other, okay? Because they are totally different. Uh, the diversity of bounty hunters uh, have a, a completely different approach on the penetra penetration testing uh, guys. So, um, one, one of the things that uh, I, I, I try to, to explain most of the the, the colleagues that uh, work for security companies that it's 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 not a, a, a perfect solution of course is gathering bug bounty and security company I'm telling you this because one of the last uh, penetration testing that I had was on a program that was present on HackerOne like uh, a year ago no sorry it was present during a year yeah and it have uh, 170 reports solved and paid. So, it's very hard to, to find something there because it was public, many researchers tried to hack it, and I can say that my penetration team uh, could gather 15, I think, security issues. Some of them pretty, pretty critical. So, 
it's uh, 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 something that you can combine each other and completely different markets. And I think they, they companies always need to have a, a, comp a security company, external, internal, it doesn't matter. They need, they need to be uh, specialized with those people. Uh, and also if it, they have the, the money, because the perfect solution involves money, you need to have money to run this, uh, do a, a bug bounty program, establish a bug bounty program, even uh, moderated by the security company, and help each other on some way, okay? So that, that's my point of view. Um, uh, it's it's still in the limbo this 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 topic and I it's just my point of view. So if you have any questions, feel free to do it or the same guy that you have on your presentation. <laughs> I <that>, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was re uh, listening to to yours and I was like, hey, damn, I'm next, <laughs> and I already use Yoda. Um, so everyone have any have any question? Yeah. Do you get pushback sorry, from sorry. Organizations? Sorry. sorry. Do you get pushback from organizations on RFD a lot? Sometimes, yeah. Uh, because sometimes you need to explain it a little better, a little better what uh, what reflect the fact on all this. Um, for example, Google. They have on their non-payment rules or out of scope rules that reflect the file download is not rewarded, okay? But I was paid for by Google with yeah, that. I have friends that were paid for RFDs as well. Yeah, it uh, depends on business Google. impact, attack scenarios, and you need to explain a little better uh, what what reflect the fund on all this, you know? Yeah, I think it's the context problem is trying yeah. to get people to start understanding like, okay, well, why would this be an issue? Yeah, um, yeah. That's the reason of a, a good report. Yeah. And try to, uh, sometimes I even uh, give, gave them links so they can understand. If I need to create a video, I create a video. Uh, so in a, a small company, Reflective Fund Download sometimes doesn't make any sense. But in a big company like Google, yeah, they pay. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's a good example of obscure vuln types that people have a hard time understanding. It makes a really good candidate for bounties. Yeah, yeah. In Mozilla, reflect the file download is uh, uh, in scope. Let's talk about it afterwards. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, any more questions? You can still, at the end, talk to me, whatever you wish, if you have any questions. When you uh, talked about uh, the Google bug you discovered, did you talk directly to the Google, Google security team or did you use HackerOne? No, no, Google security team, okay, okay. yeah. Uh, I, I don't think they, they yeah. on Hacker One they have any any connect with with Google, okay. in my opinion. Anyone? No. Hello. Uh, do you participate more in private or public uh, programs? Private, of course. They they get you more money and many uh, less researchers there so it's more m more interesting you, if you know what i mean uh, you don't have to you don't have to like race condition against other guys so uh, it's very interesting private programs but for private programs you need to have reputation and you need to climb a ladder where you get more invitations and more invitations and stuff like that so and uh, could you live only with bug bounties? Sorry? Could you just live uh, with uh, hunting uh, bounties? It or? depends. Me, in my opinion, no. Because you can earn in a month a lot of money, but next month you can earn anything. Nothing. Zero. So it's very unstable, you know? And in my opinion, no. No. But I know uh, they are, uh, especially on Acre One, uh, there are lots of guys. The top 10, especially. Uh, Two or three are living the the vida loca, like I said, because they. I, I can tell a story that a guy. Uh, I would not say the name because he's on camera. Uh, just bought. Uh, he's on top three of Hacker One. He bought a Lexus, and he on United States. I don't know why. I just saw in Lisbon a, a Lexus stand. So uh, he bought a Lexus, and he paid more 
from transportation to the Lexus come to his city, then buying the car itself on another place next door. So, and especially he goes to, when they go to DEF CON, they are in a suite with Crystal, dancers. Some guys are like that, so. I know some guys that Thanks. are like that. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> uh, I think we have another question, yeah. Uh, that not the vulnerability that you found, has it been solved by now? Uh, the vulnerability so that they said that had an acceptable risk? Uh, yeah, it was fixed. Did you get anything for it? No, anything. Oh. Yeah. And it was one of the biggest uh, newspapers online, on US. I can say that. Interesting. Yeah. Another question? Okay. Thank you. Um, how long do you spend on each project on average and how fast on average do, does it take to, how long does it take to get the first bug in a project? Well, it, average. It, average. Usually, if it's a private program, I think you can find a, a bug in like first hour, for example. Uh, on average. On a public program, not so much. Uh, sometimes you can spend one day, two days, if you find something. Okay, and when when do you know it's time to move on to another one? <laughs> That's a hard question. <laughs> uh, well, uh, I, don't quiz, I don't quit easily. So, if I don't find anything in, in those two days, I try to a different approach. Um, try some type of uh, I try to study a, a little more about the infrastructure, the web application itself, and okay, this is, I tried cross-site scripting, I tried SQL injection, I tried everything, okay, what should I do? Okay, let's try, like I told, business logic. Let's try something different, okay? So, for me to quit is very hard. Uh, I, I love good challenges, and your question, I don't know how to answer it. It's very, very hard. Okay, last question. Um, within the private, the private um, programs, yeah. programs, how do you choose which one you want to attack, or do you go for that's, them all? That's very simple. Money. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Simple. Everyone else? Okay, so what was the 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 bug that you found, if you can disclose it, that give you more kick, or you liked it more to to research it, or more challenging for you, like a remote code execution on something? No, the, that was the, the ones that I found are not very challenging. Uh, like the most epic one you found. Yeah, I'm trying to think. It was so, so, there are so many. <laughs> That's bad. Yeah, yeah. Maybe uh, subdomain takeover, which Jonathan talked about. Yeah, it was very, very cool because it was. I will not tell the company that had the vulnerability, but I can tell the the company that had the the subdomain appointed to a Salesforce account. So what I did, okay. It doesn't open anything. Let's create an account on Salesforce and telling my account is for that client. And I hacked the, the subdomain. Very simpler. And it pays a lot. Yeah. yeah. How much do you pay for? Uh, depends. It depends, yeah, on the impact. impact. Yeah. Um, but we, we paid like thousands of dollars. Yeah, it's, in a, it's very interesting uh, vulnerability. Uh, <laughs> 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 I'm already asking questions. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, can you disclose your highest payout? No. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you did the question. Sorry. I did. No. No. Uh, no. Sorry. Well, but you do have a lot of T-shirts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I could sell them someday. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, hope you enjoyed this this little talk. Thank you, David. Thank you.